Great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share a talk today. My name is Mary Claire Simone, and I will be speaking on the Immersion Post-it on Partitions, which is a project I worked on in collaboration with Lisa Johnston, David Knepp, Evelyn Nguyen, Dig Joy Paul, Anna Schilling, and Regina Zha. Uh, so the plan is to discuss this partially ordered set defined on partitions that is motivated by the following representation theoretic phenomenon. So suppose we have two finite dimensional representations of a group. We say that W1 is immersed in W2 if the eigenvalues of pi1 of g are contained in the eigenvalues of pi2 of g, counting multiplicities, um, and that this holds for all group elements g. For our project, we fix our group to be the general linear group and consider the irreducible polynomial representations, the vial modules, indexed by integer partitions lambda. Now, it's a fact that if an invertible matrix has eigenvalues x1 up to xn, then the eigenvalues of its corresponding vial module action appear as monomials in the sure polynomial s lambda. So what this means is that the vial module indexed by lambda is immersed in the vial module indexed by mu, if and only if the difference of these two sure polynomials is monomial positive. So we'll let P of n denote the set of integer partitions of n. And we have this expansion of the sure polynomial S lambda in terms of monomial symmetric polynomials, where these coefficients that show up, k lambda nu, count the number of semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda with content nu. So using the ideas from the previous slide, we can translate this definition of immersion into something strictly about integer partitions. So we define the immersion post set by lambda is immersed by mu, if and only if k lambda nu is less than or equal to k mu nu for all possible content nu. From this definition, we have some immediate observations. The first is that the single column shape uh, is the unique minimal element in the immersion post set. This is because the only semi-standard filling of the single column is the standard filling. Uh, somewhat similarly, the single row partition uh, covers the single column and is related to no other shapes. And this is because the single row has exactly one standard filling uh, whereas every other shape that is not the single column has more than one standard filling. Um, and finally, we have a statement about dominance order. So um, if lambda is immersed by mu, then it must be that lambda is uh, dominated by mu, uh, so smaller than mu in dominance order. Our goal throughout this project is to enhance our understanding of the immersions of these irreducible polynomial representations for GLN by instead strictly studying this post set on um, integer partitions. Towards the same, we accumulated results um, that identified relations and covers within the immersion post set. And to do this, we defined explicit injections between uh, sets of semi-standard Young tableau of uh, specific shapes. We also classified some of the maximal elements in the immersion post set. And to do that, we turn to the standard immersion post set. And finally, we examined the interval structure a bit in the immersion post set, which has applications to assure positivity question uh, that we'll discuss at the end. So we'll touch on all three of these things here, uh, starting with these injections um, between sets of semi-standard Young tableau um, of specific shapes that will give us uh, relations and covers. So suppose we have an integer partition lambda that has some uh, repeated part of size C, so beta copies of a part of size C. From lambda, we'll construct the shape mu by moving one of the boxes in column C into column C plus one. Automatically, uh, lambda is covered by mu in dominance order. So our goal is to define an injection between semi-standard Young tableau of shape lambda and content nu into semi-standard Young tableau of shape mu and content nu that works for all possible content nu. As a corollary to this injection, we will have also that lambda is then covered by mu in the immersion post set 
since lambda is covered by mu and dominance order. So I'll briefly sketch um, one such one such injection that we defined in our paper, um, this phi zero map. Um, so and and we'll do so just through some examples using explicit fillings of our shapes lambda and mu. Um, so essentially, what our algorithm does is it uh, identifies um, the content in the last box in column C and asks if it's legal to move this box and content into column C plus one so that, so that we maintain semi-standardness. So we ask if six is strictly greater than two. Since the answer is yes, we're safe to move our box and content. Uh, and we have arrived at a semi-standard Young tableau of shape mu. In the second case, six is not strictly greater than seven. And so we proceed to ask if five is strictly greater than one. That answer is yes. And so we're able to swap uh, the box and content containing seven with the box and content containing five and six to obtain um, a semi-standard Young tableau of shape mu. Uh, then the, the final possibility is that there's no such corresponding entries in column C and C plus one that would maintain a semi-standardness. And so if that's the case, we will swap all of the boxes and content in column C plus one with the appropriate number of boxes and content in column C. And so throughout this process, um, we've maintained semi-standardness in rows because of our conditions on beta and alpha so that we don't create any sort of overlapping scenarios. So um, in our proposition here, um, we need to ask that the number of copies of the repeated part is greater than or equal to the number of parts that came before the repeated part plus two. And once we have this, we do have an injection between these sets of semi-standard Young tableau. And as a corollary, then uh, lambda is covered by mu in uh, the immersion post set. So already from uh, this first definition of injection, uh, we have a couple of corollaries. The first is this um, collection of cover relations among all two column partitions in the immersion post set. And our other two corollaries highlight shapes lambda that will not be maximal in the immersion post set because we found some partition that is larger than it. So uh, the first interesting shape are those which have repeated first part. Uh, and the second are hook shapes, which have leg length um, greater than or equal to three. So both of these types of shapes will not be maximal in the immersion post set. In order to find maximal elements in the immersion post set, we turn to the standard immersion post set, where here lambda is less than mu, if and only if uh, lambda is less than mu in dominance order. And now just the number of standard fillings of lambda is less than or equal to the number of standard fillings of mu. So our standard immersion post set is a refinement of the immersion post set, meaning that there's more edges in the Hasse diagram or more relations. And because of this, all of the maximal elements in the standard immersion post set are also maximal in the immersion post set. So we have this general framework for identifying if shape lambda is maximal, which is to first identify all partitions mu, which dominate lambda, and then use the hook length formula uh, in order to show that f mu is strictly less than f lambda. We applied this framework um, to classify all maximal elements um, that have two rows or uh, two part partitions, and then certain cases of three row partitions. So that's explained here in this proposition. Both of the statements read rather similarly. So if we focus on the first one concerning two part partitions, um, A plus B, A, uh, we notice that this necessary and sufficient condition rests on how large that jump between the first and second part in the partition is. So we need this value B to be um, to satisfy this inequality. The table below summarizes these necessary and sufficient conditions for these types of shapes. Uh, now there's this slight obstacle to our framework for finding maximal elements, which is needing to check all um, all shapes mu which dominate are uh, shape lambda that we're interested in. My collaborators, Evelyn and Lisa, came up with a clever induction argument that helps us bypass a lot of this work. And I wanna sketch that all um, for you all now. So um, depicted on the screen, we have a portion of the Hasse diagram for dominance order 
that sits above this three row shape, A plus B, A1. And if we want to check if this shape is maximal, we want to consider all shapes mu which dominate it, which are either this two row shape over here or some shape that sits above or rather sits in a chain that contains A plus B plus one, A minus one, one. And on this shape, we're able to apply an inductive hypothesis. As we see, the jump between our first and second part is even a little bit larger than the case we're currently considering. So it turns out we're able to argue that this shape is maximal and hence has more standard fillings than all of the shapes which, which sit above it. So in order to check our inductive step, it suffices just to look at two uh, hook length inequalities uh, rather than multiple. And um, then finally, I want to build up to um, a sure positivity question. So um, if we suppose, or if we allow a uh, chi lambda of mu to be the irreducible uh, character for the symmetric group indexed by lambda uh, evaluated on the conjugacy class of cycle type mu, then the Murnigam Nakayama rule gives us the expansion of the power of some symmetric functions, p mu, in terms of the sure functions. Uh, where the coefficients that show up are precisely these um, symmetric characters evaluated on this conjugacy class mu. Uh, so we'll consider a subset of partitions um, and take this sum of power sum symmetric polynomials uh, over this subset of partitions. We can then expand in terms of the sure polynomials where now this coefficient is the restricted row sum in the character table for the symmetric group. So where we only add up the columns in which uh, mu appears in this subset A. And why this setup is maybe interesting is, um, you know, we're looking at a, a multiplicity free sum of power sums. And if we take all power sum symmetric functions that um, coming from all integer partitions of N, we obtain the Frobenius image of the SN conjugation action on itself. So there's this representation theory of the symmetric group that shows up when we consider these sums of power sums. And um, Sundaram asked in 2018, which choices of subsets of partitions give sure positivity for these sums of power sums? And Sundaram has um, answered this question for particular subsets. Um, as well as has focused on intervals in reverse lexicographic ordering on partitions. Um, so she's conjectured that all such intervals will be sure positive or will give sure positivity and has proven so in certain cases. So we applied this question uh, to our setting in the immersion post set and looked at intervals here to add, and asked if we obtained sure positivity of these interval power sums. Uh, so we, in particular focused on just two shapes, one of which being um, n minus two, two. Um, and we noticed that this interval seems to stabilize when n is greater than or equal to nine to these four shapes that we have. So in addition to this interval n minus two, two, we also looked at the interval n minus two, one, one. And if these conjectured intervals hold, we have shown that these um, sums of power sums are sure positive. Um, and to do so, we use the combinatorial Murnigam Nakayama rule. Um, and we're even able to show something stronger, which is that all of these partial sums um, leading up to our last term um, are also sure positive along the way. So we've been rather interested in this question of examining these intervals that sit low in the immersion post set that contain the single column um, and have noticed an interesting phenomenon when we're just considering our two column um, shapes. Uh, so parts less than or equal to two. Um, and in doing some experimentation with SAGE, we're uh, seeing that not only do we have sure positivity in most cases, if we don't, we just have an, a minus one coefficient on the sure fun function indexed by the single column. Um, and we're also seeing that all sure functions are appearing in the, um, in the expansion. So these are just kind of interesting phenomenon that we're actively looking at now. All right, so uh, thank you for your time.